also, if you look carefully in the bulletin, there's some information about God's trombones that I would encourage you to read. The one thing I'd like to add is, uh, of course, it was written by James Weldon Johnson, but they are essentially sermons, many sermons that have uh, a deep meaning. I will be sharing with you this morning, Let My People Go, and I would encourage you to listen to it the way one might listen to a spiritual. When you listen to a spiritual, you should listen to it understanding that there are often coded messages within a spiritual that have an even deeper and profound meaning for those who have been oppressed. Let my people go. And God called Moses from the burning bush. He called in a still, small voice. And he said, Moses, Moses. And Moses listened, and he heard the voice. And he said, Lord, here am I. And God spoke again to Moses. And he said, Moses, draw not nigh. Take off your shoes, for you are standing on holy ground. And Moses stopped where he stood, and Moses took off his shoes, and Moses looked in the bush, and he heard the voice, but he saw no man. Again God spoke to Moses. This time he spoke to him in a voice of thunder. I am the Lord God Almighty, the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. And Moses hid his face. And God said, I have seen the awful suffering of my people down in Egypt. Their hard oppressors, their overseers and drivers. The groans of my people have filled my ears, and I can't stand it no longer. So I've come down to deliver them out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of Egypt into the land of Canaan. So therefore, Moses, go down. Go down into Egypt and say to Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go. Moses paused and he said, Lord, who, who am I to speak before O Pharaoh? For Lord, you know I'm short of time. And God said, I will be thy mouth, and I will be thy tongue. Go down, go down into Egypt, and say to Pharaoh, Let my people go. And Moses went down with his rod in his hand, and he said unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go. Who is this God? Pharaoh said. I know all the gods of Egypt, but I don't know any God of Israel. So you go back, Moses. You go back and you tell your God that I will not let his people go. Poor old Pharaoh. Poor old Pharaoh. He knows all the knowledge of Egypt, yet he never knew. He never knew the one and living God. Poor old Pharaoh. He's got all the power of Egypt, and he's going to try to test that strength with the might of the great Jehovah, the might of the God of hosts, the Lord Almighty in battle. And God, sitting high up in his heaven, laughed at poor old Pharaoh. And God said, go again. Go again.
again, Moses, this time you and your brother Aaron, and say once more, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go. And Moses and Aaron went down with their rods in their hands, and they worked many signs and wonders. But Pharaoh called his magic men, and they worked wonders too. He would not, no, he would not let God's people go. And Moses paused, and he hid his face once again. Poor old Pharaoh. Again, he has all the power of Egypt, and he's trying to test that strength with the Lord God Almighty. And Pharaoh called his overseers, and Pharaoh called the drivers, and he said, put heavier burdens on the backs of the Hebrew children. And the people chode with Moses, and they yelled out loud, you've been to Pharaoh, and look what he's done to us now. And Moses was troubled in mind. And God rained down plagues upon Egypt, plagues of frogs and lice and locusts, plagues of blood and boils and darkness, and other plagues beside. And every time God would remove a plague, Pharaoh's heart was hardened. He would not, no, he would not let God's people go. And then the Lord said to Moses, Listen, Moses, the God of Israel will not be mocked. Just one more witness of my power I'll give to this hard-hearted Pharaoh. This very night, about midnight, I'll pass over the land of Egypt, and I will smite their firstborn dead. And Pharaoh rose in the middle of the night, and he sent in a hurry for Moses. And he said to Moses, Moses, you take all your goods and all your flocks and all the Hebrew children and never return to this land again. And Moses led them on, and God followed on as before, like a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And they came down to the Red Sea. In the morning, oh, in the morning, they missed the Hebrew children for 400 years, 400 years. They held them down in Egypt's land. They held them under the driver's lash, working without money and without a price. And it might have been Pharaoh's wife who said, Pharaoh, look what you've done now. Look what you've done. You've sent away the Hebrew children. Who's going to serve us now? Who's going to plant and plow the corn? Who's going to work in the middle of the night? Who's going to work in the blazing sun? Pharaoh, you tell me that. And Pharaoh called his generals, and the generals called the captains, and the captains called the soldiers, and they hitched up all of the chariots. Six hundred chariots. 
2,400 horses, and they were all filled. The chariots were all filled with men to pursue the Hebrew children down at the Red Sea. And the children looking back, they saw Pharaoh's army coming, and the rumble of the chariots was like a thunderstorm, and the wearing of the wheels was like a rushing wind, and the dust from the horses made a cloud that darkened the day, and the glittering of the spears was like lightning in the night. And the children of Israel all lost hope. The children of Israel all lost faith. And they mumbled, and they grumbled, and they yelled aloud to Moses, Are there no graves in Egypt? Slavery in Egypt would have been better than to come here and die in this wilderness. And Moses said, Stand still. Stand still and see the Lord's salvation. For the Lord God of Israel will not forsake his people. He'll break great Egypt's swords and shields. He'll break the chariots. He'll break the, he'll break the horsemen. He'll show proud Pharaoh who is really the God of Israel. And Moses lifted his rod over the Red Sea. And God, with a blast of his nostrils, blew the waters apart, and the waves rushed back and stood in a pile. And it left a path in the middle of the sea as dry as the sands of the desert. And the children crossed on over, on to the other side. And when Pharaoh saw the children crossing dry, he rushed on in behind them. And old Pharaoh got about halfway across when God unlashed the waters and the waves rushed back together. And Pharaoh and his army got lost. Pharaoh and his host got drowned. And Moses sang, and Miriam danced. And the people of Israel shouted for joy. Listen. Listen, all you sons of Pharaoh. Who do you think? Who do you think can hold God's people back when the Lord God himself has said, let my people go.